This is modern homesteading. These are the timbers that I used to mill uh, the lumber for uh, uh, timber frame cabin number one. Um, I'm taking these apart, breaking them up, and I'm going to use these because they are still good. One more winter, one more summer, they're probably no good uh, to finish up the saw vise. So I'm going to try to finish up the saw vise today. So I just finished up the outside leg right there. I'll show you how all this works here when we're done. Right here using the timbers uh, that I just showed you from outside. Nice tight little saddle joint right there bolted together and then a hole for the stretcher. I've got over here everything cut for the upright so we'll uh, bring you along. We'll do the saddle, get the other leg built up and then start putting the cross supports in. If you follow the Forest Service plans, the whole, uh, ba the whole base uh, for the saw vise is made out of 2 by 4 material, um, which is fine. It'll work just fine. I like the look of full dimension lumber, so I, and I have uh, uh, quite a bit left over from the first cabin. So as you can see here, that extra half inch, a full dimension 2 by 4, which is a full 2 by a full excuse me, a full four by full two, just gives it a heft and a look of, it makes it special. It just makes it, it's just something that's just extraordinary, uh, not something you can buy off the shelf, and that extra half inch goes a long ways of giving it just some girth, bulk, and just a, a kind of more of a, a masculine stance. These old timbers are way out of square, so I'm going to use my chainsaw mill uh, to quickly square up two sides so I can get a good point of reference and cut our full dimension 2x4s out of there. This little mini mill attachment is so versatile uh, in a wood shop, just anywhere where you got to cut big timbers. I, I use it all the time. You know, in reality, you could do an entire uh, timber frame cabin with no other attachments than that. It's going to take a little bit more time, but that's how versatile it is. It's really a great little tool. So what I've got here is I've got an overcut 2x4. Uh, this is 2 and a quarter overcut. Uh, so I'll take it to the table saw and finish it up. You see right there, see how rough that is? That's not typically what you're going to get from a chainsaw mill. The reason why that's so rough is I'm using a really aggressive full skip chain, which is just a chain that I would use for wood cutting on that. And I don't care about that so much because I'll clean this up on the table saw. But just to give you an idea, the difference. If you use a, a ripping chainsaw blade that's designed for that, you'll get a much smoother rough cut than this. A lot of work for a 2x4 when you can go and buy one. But you know, I think that it's oftentimes the smallest details that differentiate true art from the mundane. And for me, um, these little things make a difference. It makes a difference to me when I use it, um, just to have something that's just a little bit different, a little bit extraordinary set aside. It affects your work. When I work at the stand and I look at it, I could have just went and bought two by fours, but the fact that I cut these from my own land and just made things a little bit different just makes it more special. And for me, um, that special, that uniqueness translates into my work. So why are there two two by fours here when I only need one for the leg? There's reality right there, not paying attention, cutting the wrong side of the line, making four cuts before I realized it too. Scrap that whole piece that I went to all the trouble of milling, but it's all right. We'll use it for a knee brace. It won't go to waste. The table saw really helps with uh, the saddle notches. We can use our timber framing chisels and knock these out. Get uniformity here. And then we can finish this off by hand. The saw blade is the same each time, so we can just chisel our wood right down so we start working those saw blade lines out and we're right on target.
All right, time to test our joint. Look at that. That's what we like. Now with our saddle joint here put together, uh, pre-drilled and we're going to set these, bolt these together with these nice big heavy half inch carriage, carriage bolts. The, the frame itself is pretty sturdy, pretty burly, so a, you don't want to use a small bolt, it just doesn't look right dimensionally. You want uh, big timbers and big bolts. Congratulations, you made it through part four. Only one more part to go. That's right, it's done. You guys don't know it, but I do. Because <laughs> I feel it is done. So if you'd like to see the completed project, the completed crosscut saw vise, top left, click on that. It'll take you right over there. And uh, it really turned out great. Uh, some cool details and some clever things uh, that uh, I'll show you how it works that uh, I'm really happy with. So if you'd like to watch that, click on over. And as always, this is my custom to remind you to click the thumbs up if you enjoy these videos. Uh, it's a way you can show support for the channel and it helps me and my family and we appreciate that. So on to part five, the conclusion.